but. Okay, so suppose we plot a point that we call A plus B I. A plus B I is what we call standard form. What we want to do is we want to put that into what's referred to as trigonometric form. And you may ask why. The trigonometric form is a lot easier to work with than the complex form. For example, you know that 45 degrees is the same as pi over 4. Why would you convert one to the other? Well, when you're graphing sine and cosine, it's a lot easier to work with pi over 4 than it is 45. And in calculus, working with pi over 4 is much easier than working with 45. So there's just advantages. Tomorrow, you're going to see the real advantage to working with trigonometric form as opposed to complex form. So we have to be able to come up with some interesting pieces here. And in order to do that, I'm going to describe the relationships that exist. Notice that as I plot A plus B I, it makes a triangle. Yes, no? Exactly. Where this has length A, And this has length B. And it even forms an angle which we refer affectionately to as theta. Does anybody remember what we called the distance from 0 to this coordinate? Do you remember what we called that on Thursday? It's over than M. Modalis, yeah. Yeah, we said the modalis or the absolute value of z. Do you remember how we calculated that? Square root of a squared plus b squared. And isn't that the same as the radius of a circle? Like, for example, the distance from here to here, you know, if we were to construct a circle, couldn't this be written as R for radius? Sure, same stuff. I'm going to write an expression that involves A, theta, and R. It's where you want to try to think about this before me. A, theta, and R. Hint has something to do with trigonometry. A, theta, and R. Cosine is adjacent divided by hypotenuse. Everybody see it? So I can make this statement. The cosine of theta is equal to the adjacent side, which is A, divided by the hypotenuse, which we will call R. I would like to make one more equation. I would like to write a relationship for B and R and theta. Sine. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Do you see? Sine of theta is opposite, which is B, divided by R. Now, here's what's really cool. Our goal is to express this complex number in what we call trigonometric form. If you see the A here, I have an A over there, don't I? If you see the B here, I have a B over here, don't I? So therefore... If I simply multiply both sides by R, I get R cosine of theta is equal to A. And furthermore, if I multiply both sides by R here, I get R sine of theta is equal to B. That means if I want to take this guy and bring it down here, Notice instead of writing A, 
I write R cosine of theta plus, and instead of B, I write R sine of theta times I. They both have an R, don't they? So I'm going to do the last step, which is to factor R out, cosine of theta plus, and so that we don't think that the I belongs with the theta, we're going to raise I times the sine of theta. And this is what we call trig form. We have standard form of a complex number. We have trigonometric form of a complex number. And we didn't make this formula up. We simply gathered some equations from Sokotoa and pieced it together. Now, when people want to convert to this form, they need to know what r is. And we've already determined that r is simply the square root of a squared plus b squared. So if you want to find r to put it in this form, you need, just need to solve r is equal to the square root of a squared plus b squared. That's it. The other thing that you need to be able to find is theta. In order to find theta, if you notice, which trig function involves theta a and b? Tangent. We solve tangent of theta equal to b divided by a. And that allows us to find those pieces. Ready to try an example? How about three of them? And then you can work on your assignment. 2 plus 2i. This is standard form. I'm going to turn it into trigonometric form. How I do that is I need an r. r is equal to the square root of what and what? a squared plus b squared. So that will give me 2 squared plus 2 squared or the square root of 8. Square root of 8 is 2 roots of 2. So that's my r value, 2 roots of 2. Same thing as the modalist, the distance from 0 to the point. We good? I want to find theta. I solved tangent of theta is equal to 2 divided by 2. We want to solve that. Tangent of theta is equal to 1. Wouldn't it be nice if we had talked about solving equations? Where is tangent positive? First and third. So I go first and I go third. I go to my handy dandy calculator. I turn it on. And I tangent inverse 1. And I get 45. I have two spots. I have 45 and I have what's the other one? 225. Can somebody tell me, do I want to use the 45 degree angle or the 225 degree angle? What did you say? Why? You did it on Thursday. What'd you do on Thursday? Graft it. graft it. If you graft that, where does it bring you? Does it bring you to this one or that one? It brings you to this one. See that? That's how you know to use the 45 and not the 225. If you were to graph it, that's, that's the one we're talking about. See that? So theta is 45 degrees. But we write our answer in radians. So theta is equal to 45 degrees. What is that in radians? Hint, it involves a pi and a 4. Pi over 4, good. So I have my r value, 2 root to 2, and I have my theta value, which is pi over 4. So the trigonometric form is 2 root to 2 
times the cosine of pi over 4 plus i sine of pi over 4. That is my trigonometric form of that complex number right there. Don't write this down. I just want to make sure it all makes sense to you. I got two roots of two. What is the cosine of pi over four? Oh, come on. We know this. Root of two over two. Plus, and the sine of pi over four is? Watch what happens if I were to distribute two roots of two through. Two divided by two. See how those are going to go away? What's root of two times root of two? Two. And then 2 divided by 2 is going to go away. Root of 2 times root of 2 is 2. Does that look familiar? Yeah. Whoa, I just, I just checked my answer. Like I just took it from trigonometric form, and I turned it back into standard form. You see that? They're related. We're not making this stuff up. Okay, we try the next one. I want to turn this into trigonometric form. You tell me, where do I start? What do I have to find first? R. So R is equal to the root of A squared. What's A squared? 9. What's B squared? If you take 3 roots of 3 times 3 roots of 3. 9 times 3, which is? 27. I wish I knew what 9 plus 27 was. 36. I wish there was a square root of 36. 6. Sweet. R is 6. Look at how nice that works. So that's just the Pythagorean theorem, right? Like you've been doing that since like seventh grade. Then we do tangent of theta is equal to what over what? Yeah, three roots of three over negative three. Remember to take the B value and divide it by the A value. The threes cancel and I get negative root of three. Where is tangent negative? Second and fourth. I go to my calculator, and I do tangent inverse of root of 3. And as you all know, because you memorize it, we get 60. So I got a 60 here and a 60 here. Which one am I talking about? The, the one in the second quadrant or fourth quadrant? How do you know you're talking second quadrant? Because if you were to graph it, you'd end up in the second quadrant. So what's this angle in the second quadrant here? 120 degrees. What is 120 degrees as radians? 2 pi over 3. Thank you. So I've got my r value of 6, and I've got my uh, theta value as 2 pi over 3. So therefore, I have 6 times the cosine of 2 pi over 3 plus i sine of 2 pi over 3. That's trigonometric form of that complex number. It's beautiful. We love it. Yes. Thank you for asking, Morgan. Do you understand why we chose two and four? Yeah. Good. So now, just look at this piece right there. If you were to graph this, you would go back three units, and you would go up three roots of three, which is like, I don't know, seven or something like that. And you would plot the point right there, right? That is in the second quadrant. Okay. If you were to graph it, second quadrant, as opposed to fourth quadrant. If it would have been positive here and negative there, then it would be the fourth quadrant. Okay. Better? Yeah. What shirt are we wearing today? It's Custer State Park. Oh, I've been there. Uh -huh. Cool. You've been to Devil's Tower? No. Oh, it's, that's pretty cool. It's just this big thing in the middle of nowhere. And a lot of fun, though. Okay, cool. We good? All right, one more. Man, you guys are smart. I know how tough this would be if you weren't. 
I need, I need more enthusiasm from, from this general direction right here. Right now, I, I got the head slouched on the hand. I'm losing my motivation. Thank you. All right. So what's different about this one? There's no A value. It's 0 minus 2i. So what we're going to do is we're going to say r is equal to the square root of 0 plus 4, which is 2. Sweet. And then we say tangent of theta is equal to b divided by a. Ah! Undefined. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Remember, it's b divided by a. If zero is on the bottom, it's undefined. If zero is on the top, then it's zero. So, where is tangent undefined? Remember, tangent's like slope, right? Yeah. And here is slope zero or is slope undefined? Zero. How about here? Undefined. So, tangent's undefined at 90 degrees and at 270 degrees. Am I talking about 90 or 270? 270, because if you were to plot it, you'd be doing 270. What's 270 in terms of radians? 3 pi over 2. And so you get 2 times the cosine of 3 pi over 2 plus I sine of 3 pi over 2. That last one took us about two and a half minutes. Can I show you how to do it in 20 seconds? Sometimes you're so deep in the forest, you can only see the trees, right? But you can't see the bigger picture. I'm going to try to help you see the bigger picture. You ready? If you were to plot 0 minus 2i, everybody agree it would be there? What's the distance from there to there? 2, right? What's your angle? Or 3 pi over 2. Hey, look at that. We're done. Do you, do you see? Like, I, I'm just trying to say there's multiple ways of thinking about it. And we as teachers are usually really good at showing you, like, a process by which you can do it. But we're really bad at trying to communicate some ways, other ways of thinking about the problem. And when I see negative 2i, I definitely do not do what I took you through first. I do that because I like to save time. I'm all about saving time. Because I got calculus test grade I haven't done yet. Yes, question. Excellent point. It's definitely easier in that scenario, but for me right now, Cassie, like when I see 2 plus 2, I can see that that makes a 45 degree angle, which is pi over 4. Like, I got my angle. I'm done. Like, I definitely don't set up tangent. But if you all want to set it up, that's fine. I'm just saying that you could definitely look at the picture, too, and try to figure it out a little bit. See what I'm saying? Some of you are scared of that, though, aren't you? It's an intimidating thing. All right. Go to work.